I think it's very fair at this point to really say that 2023 was the absolute worst year for the Walt Disney Company for two major reasons. They had a trend of box office flops for every single division out there, whether it was Marvel, whether it was Lucasfilm, or even Walt Disney Animation Studios. Even, of course, when it comes down to Lucasfilm, The Mandalorian Season 3 fell flat toward the end. That shifted a lot of Star Wars fans away. So it was not a good year, also because it fell on their 100th year anniversary and it really caused Bob Iger and the rest of the board of directors to double down on their cost-cutting measures. This is exactly why a lot of the movies and the TV shows coming out in 2025 are going to have a more cheaper look. They're dialing back on special effects, they're dialing back on CGI effects, whatever have you, and that's just the beginning when it comes to Bob Iger's cost-cutting measures. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So, given that the whole drama surrounding Fantastic Four 2025 has only been getting worse ever since the overall development broke out for female Silver Surfer being portrayed by Julia Garner, something that a lot of fans have been very angered about, and rightfully so, because they're shifting away from the traditional Silver Surfer that all the fans grew up with when it came to the comics, and even if you want to count the second Fantastic Four movie from the mid-2000s. But when you look at everything related to it in that sense, we know that Bob Iger has been in full-on damage control mode and is really heavily defending everything that he's doing with his agenda and everything related to uh, DEI getting thrown into Marvel. And at the same exact time, Bob Iger says that there's no agenda at all, that there's no push for a culture war when it comes to Disney. Now, focusing on Fantastic Four 2025 and the whole female Silver Surfer drama, with both Lucasfilm and Marvel Studios now considered two of the most failed divisions at the Disney company, one major development has to do with She-Hulk actress Tatiana Maslany and her view and defense for Disney and, the Mar um, and of course Marvel, and how she of course supports the push for female Silver Surfer in Fantastic Four 2025. Tatiana went on to deliver the following. I would say I'm an independent woman who understands the value of women in our side of the demographic that needs to be addressed and included further in the MCU. The bigger issue here that we have with studios like Disney and Marvel is that they tend to say that they want to represent women, but the moment they get the smallest amount of criticism or pushback, they just move on from one actress to the next. I think that this community is a very toxic one, especially after witnessing how fans reacted to what the plans are for a female iteration of Silver Surfer. I just kept shaking my head at how ridiculous that was. Not every character has to be a male, and quite frankly, it's about time more women obtain roles in the Marvel Universe, even if it means taking the slot of a popular character that was designed for a male. I think the whole argument of gender swapping and or catering to female roles is connected to some level of an agenda is ridiculous and nothing but a pro nothing but projecting of, of course, from insecure men that are part of this community. I truly believe that's what it boils down to. When you are an actress, you anticipate this kind of response. And I anticipated that same response with She-Hulk, and I wasn't all that surprised really when it happened. I mean, listen, I can't really comment on who is playing the female version of Silver Surfer, but from the reports that I have seen, if they are true, I would absolutely warn Miss Garner from these toxic fans and those that are, that are opposed to a character like hers. Everything is blown out of proportion. All I can say is, so what if fans don't get their traditional Silver Surfer that was, of course, male? We already had all these established male characters like Iron Man, Hulk, and Captain America. I think it's seriously time to change things up a bit, and it's exciting to see, at least, how Marvel has their use of the multiverse at their disposal to do pretty much anything they want. 
I think it's the best tool to really justify why you have this or that iteration of a character, so fans really can't complain there. I mean, focusing on Fantastic Four without the male iteration isn't a big deal at all. I think Bob Iger and Kevin Feige made a great move to focus on more women in the Fantastic Four and among other Marvel projects that they will be releasing next year. It was disheartening to see how they gave up so fast on Brie Larson and her role with Captain Marvel after they didn't meet box office projections for the Marvels. The failure of that film had nothing to do with women. In the Fantastic Four, let's say it doesn't meet Marvel's projections, you just can't go blaming women on shifting away from something that's popular or familiar. Now guys, let me just stop here for one moment before I move on. Now again, Tatiana Maslany has a long record of attacking the fandom, attacking Marvel fans, and really just not knowing a clue about what she's talking about. Now, it's not about the push for women that's the problem per se, it's the fact that they're pushing it when it's not needed as an agenda to kind of just say, oh, we're doing this just for the sake of doing this. That's when it doesn't work. When a story is not unfolding organically and when the script is not written naturally, that's where it feels all out of place. So that's exactly why a lot of fans are beginning to get very fed up with the current state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I know Nelson Peltz pointed that out when it came to the Marvels. You know, why do you need, you know, an all-female-led movie just for the sake of doing it? right? And it wasn't just the fact that it was female-led, let's be honest. The story was so out of place, it wasn't something in particular that fans were even asking for to begin with. So Tatiana is way off when it comes to the Fantastic Four. I mean, there's a lot of people that love female roles as long as they fit the story and they feel natural. You don't think one bit about Beatrix Kiddo and Kill Bill, or Ellen Ripley and Alien, or Sarah Connor and Terminator. I know those are the two biggest examples there, but when you watch those characters, you're not thinking to yourself of how cringe it is, because it's natural. It doesn't come along with cringeworthy dialogue or sequences because it doesn't fit the character. That's what happens when you don't write a script that's natural, and that's the problem. So moving onwards, she goes on to conclude, a story is a story and sometimes I think changing or altering that outline can help out the process to success. I hold my differences with Bob, but at least he and Kevin Feige are giving women the treatment they deserve, to a degree. I think men just need to accept it for what it is and to just deal with it. These are movies and at the end of the day they don't really change lives. They are superhero films of all things. So, Tatiana Maslany, I think, really is also out of place with understanding how powerful movies can really be to people that grew up with these comics, to people that have different and various memories associated with those comics, with people that they know. It's stuff like that, right? And I think that, at the end of the day, when you have Disney and Marvel Studios shifting away from the magic of what makes these movies so great, that's where you're gonna have a trend, at least for the second half of this decade, where it's just gonna be flop after flop, where I can't even see if Disney lasts until 2030 at this rate. Because if they're gonna double down on DEI as much as Bob Iger is saying that he is, it's really not looking good for next year, let alone for 2026, which by the way, is the very year that Bob Iger plans to step down. So I don't know if you guys knew that, but he does plan to quit by 2026 sometime. So overall guys, you know, drop a comment below, fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. Yeah.